Crossfade would emerge on the rock scene in the mid 2000s and they hit it right out of the gate having a platinum selling record with their 2004 self-titled debut album. According to one local paper they were one of the biggest acts to emerge from South Carolina since Hootie and the Blowfish. But whatever happened to the band? That's what we're going to explore in today's video. Crossfade came onto many people's radars with the release of their single Cold. Personally I remember when I bought the PlayStation Portable, I think it was around 2005, and they would give you this promotional stuff with it like Spider-Man 2 was included with the purchase, and I remember the video for the song Cold was also included as part of it as well. While the band seemed to have overnight success, their career dated back to nearly a decade prior, and it was a really long road to hitting it big. Crossfade would be made up of frontman and guitarist Ed Sloan, bassist Mitch James, DJ programmer Tony Byrodes, and drummer Brian Geiger. The band's origins dated back to the early 90s in Columbia, South Carolina, where they played under the moniker The Nothing. In fact, three quarters of the band, minus Byrodes, were made up of the band at this point in time. Their early sound was said to be heavily influenced by Metallica. They would go through a few more musical style changes before things finally started to click by the early 2000s. But unlike Hootie and the Blowfish, who had a huge grassroots following before they signed to a major label, Crossfade took a different approach. Side note guys, I've done a whole video on the career of Hootie and the Blowfish, if you guys want to check it out, the link is down below. Frontman and guitarist Ed Sloan, who previously was a software engineer according to one report, would tell the Greenville News that he focused on writing music and recording, and they read a lot of business books. They would utilize a studio that Sloan had actually built in his own house, and it was around 2001 to 2002 that they started recording a lot of song ideas. They would add DJ Tony Byrodes, whose sampling and turntable scratching added a new element to the band's sound. The group soon changed their name to Sugar Daddy Superstar, and they would sign with a Los Angeles-based company named Taxi that worked with a lot of bands to refine their sound in hopes of attracting major record label attention. Basically, they were teaching Crossfade how to write commercial music. Mitch James would tell the Daily Herald, they're not afraid to tell you if your songs suck, they're brutally honest about your songs. Things seemed to work out for the band at the time as they were only one of three bands signed to Taxi who were actually displayed at the company's annual road rally convention. The buzz was starting to slowly build around the band. They would actually release eight tracks as part of a self-release set, which included their future single Cold. The release would find its way in the hands of a company called Promo Squad, who according to the VNU Monitor, and I quote, Promo Squad, which supplies Billboard and Billboard radio monitors with its hitmaker predictor chart data. The company also operated a website called GetFamous.com that took submissions from unsigned acts. Based on how you performed on their so-called hitmaker chart data, they could then open up negotiations with labels, which for the band was a long time coming. Crossfade spent nearly two years shopping around their demo tape to record labels, and it seemed like virtually every record label rejected them. However, they finally nabbed a recording contract with Sony-owned Columbia Records. Cue the jokes about a band from Columbia being on the label Columbia. The group soon changed their name to Crossfade. Columbia would bring in famed producer Randy Staub, who worked with the likes of Metallica and Molly Crew to remix the group's demo, which eventually became their self-titled record. He'd also record two new songs with the band, including So Far Away and The Unknown. But things were slow for Crossfade. They had to wait nearly 16 months while their record was in limbo, and the band at one point were concerned that they were going to get dropped by their label. The long wait also resulted in the group's drummer Brian Geiger leaving the band, being replaced by James Branham. Now I want to point out that in the interviews the band gave around this time, it's not really clear why they were in limbo for 16 months, but I've done a lot of stories about bands during this period of time, and in the record industry there was a lot of mergers between record labels, there was personnel and management changes, so this is not necessarily an uncommon story. Finally, release date came for Crossfade in April of 2004. The band's sound would draw comparisons to Incubus, Metallica, Stained, and P.O.D. Their debut album sold a paltry 5,000 copies in its first week out, but then radio stations started playing the single Cold, and the record took off from there and it would eventually go platinum. The single would peak at number 3 on the Modern Rocks Tracks chart and had crossover appeal peaking at number 81 on the Hot 100 chart. The subsequent singles, which included So Far Away, was also another top 10 hit on the Modern Rock Tracks chart. Soon enough, Crossfade were getting a lot of airplay next to the likes of Three Doors Down and Nickelback. The band's first major tour saw them hit the road with Shinedown and Alter Bridge, but in 2005, Tony Byrodes left the group due to what appeared to be creative differences between him and Ed Sloan. In 2006, the band released their second record, Falling Away, but it sold about a fifth of its predecessor, and the band underwent another lineup change, with guitarist Les Hall joining the group. 
Hall was already a pretty accomplished musician, having played with Fish's Trey Anastasio and had produced other bands. The band would end up losing their recording contract with Columbia, and Ed Sloan was now dealing with writer's block and depression. The band's drummer also left, and it was during this time Crossfade started teasing fans with some new music that was hopefully going to come out in 2008 or 2009, but the group's third album wouldn't see a release date until 2011 and it would struggle, and the band would tour for just over a year, and over the next several years, it wasn't clear what was going on with Crossfade. In 2016, Sloan released a statement after many years of radio silence, saying that the band was still together, and maybe someday would see some new music, but to this day, that hasn't materialized, as Sloan appears to be more preoccupied with his solo career. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in Rock Culture Stories.